Hi, it's Kelly Eckhard from kellyeckhard.com and welcome to another edition of Chit Chat Friday. Today I have two exciting guests for you guys. I have Sarah and Yoshi from Sash and Yosh. So today we're going to chat about work life and what's going on and some of their inspiration and all that kind of stuff. So uh, hang in there and have a listen. So let's get started with... Tell me a little bit about yourselves and uh, how you guys met. Hi, I'm Yoshi. I'm from Japan. I moved to Hitchin six years ago and then I met Sarah through our mutual school mum friend. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then we just fell in love with each other's artwork. That's how we naturally started our design business, Sas and Yosh. So I've always been in Hitchin, but I lived in London for six years and then came back and was teaching at the time and I'd taken a redundancy, gone back to university to do children's book illustration and then I was finished my degree, I was working back at another college teaching um, A-level art students and then that's when I met Yoshi and I wasn't massively happy at the new place I was teaching and I didn't really know what I wanted to do and Yoshi literally said, I think, in our kitchen one day, over coffee, why don't we start a business? Yeah. Uh, what business? Yes, what came in my head? Yes. <laughs> I was like, what should we do? And she said, well, because Yoshi has a background in fashion, um, and then we would both um, had published children's books. Mm. So illustration and something, and Yoshi was like, well, I can make repeat patterns, so let's make some designs. And we started off with um, wallpaper, mm. tea towels, and mugs. Apron. An apron. Yes, nice. Yes, and then kind of just put it out there and yeah. see what happens. Yeah, see what happens. Amazing. And so, what inspires your designs? Do you like, have a theme or a story you're trying to tell? Like, so, when you're sitting down, say, right, we want to come up with a new wallpaper or a new sweatshirt design or something, what, what gets the creativity rolling and going? For signature designs, such as Flower Girls, fly, yeah. uh, Flying Journey, The Bird Pattern. We didn't really set up our theme. No? Yeah, we Just everything come up in yeah. our head. Nice. We kind of mm. decided when we, um, before we decided what we were going to make with anything, we, I think it was maybe in like July, we said let's go away for three months and just start drawing stuff and then we'll cool. come back and we'll see what patterns we can make out of everything. And the first designs, I think Yoshi did the flower girl was the first thing you draw, drew. Yeah. Absolutely. And then I went to the V&A and was looking at the jewellery collection there. And I ended up drawing the birds with sort of jewellery on them. Yeah. Hmm. And then it just kind of, it was all a bit, we were like, oh, we love flamingo. I mean, we've always been a bit like, oh, let's draw a unicorn. Oh, let's draw something mm -hmm. else. Yeah. yeah. We like circus. I mean, we're just, yeah. <laughs> we don't, kind of just whatever we fancy. Mm. themes that we like which I guess is the best thing about having your own business that you can yeah. literally decide yeah whatever so we, you fancy so we don't really really follow the trend yeah in now this market we just do whatever we, yeah. we like that's mm. I mean that that's the best though right because then you start to see a trend within your within your yeah. designs mm. it's the signature yeah but I think the thing that when we first started it was harder because we were sending our stuff to lots of people mm. And we were trying to get agencies to be interested because we do our own brand, but we also do lots of collaboration work and commission work. But because yeah. we were so not within any kind of a look or a style yeah, or not, a trend, kind of categorizable. nobody mm. kind of knew what to do with us. So okay. nobody yeah. was sort of that interested in, but it doesn't quite, you know, Liberty's likes, they didn't, it, it was like, we love it, but it doesn't fit in with what we do, or it's a bit too this for John Lewis, or it's a bit, mm. you know, it's not you know, with illustration agencies where it doesn't fit within any kind of like style selection yeah. or collection we box. have. Yeah. And yeah. I think at first we were kind of like, well, that's a, a problem because we're not going to get any work. Mm. But then now it's, it's better because I don't think there's, I mean, there are people, I guess, that we, other small brands that we love that do illustration as well. But there's, I don't think there's anyone that looks like us. Or I don't think we look like anybody else's yeah. stuff, mm -hmm. more to the that's point. It. That's the nice thing is once you're doing the designs yourself and it's coming up out of your head, most likely it's not going to look like anyone else's because it's really hard to copy someone else's imagination, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. It's there and you refine it. Or if you see something on pin, it just a bit different, then you change it. Then mm -hmm. I would assume. Yeah. 
is important. Have you had any issues with copying or anything? How do you how do you guys can you copyright your designs? Does that does that work at all or? We've had so funnily enough, I was looking at um, there's a few people I know who are illustrators who've had their stuff blatantly ripped off recently. Um, yeah. One friend of mine who does these amazing wall stickers, who then um, somebody who bought the wall sticker found their same wall sticker in a place called Pound World. Oh, exactly God. the same, but exactly the same. And there's yeah. not a lot you can do about it. But um, I think the thing is that our stuff is quite different. It's quite complicated. Yeah. It's often got loads of colours, so I think it's harder to probably just take it off something and copy it at a high resolution because there's yeah. probably a bit too much going mm. on, maybe. But I guess the big, I mean, we've looked into copyright. I think when you when you create work as an illustrator, an artist, everything you create is automatically, you own the copyright yeah. to it. And you have to put copyright on stuff. I mean, when we send stuff to people mm. or to new companies um, to show them examples of work, we always put copyright on the bottom. But it's harder. I think it's quite, it's really expensive to individually copyright a specific image. I think... Yeah. Most of the time, if somebody copies your work and you have the original drawings and the original dated PSDs or Photoshop documents that show the last time or when the document was created yeah. and you've got all the layers and the work, whatever, you can kind of prove that way. But I think if you want to physically copyright each image, it's a couple hundred pounds per image. We've just got so many images, it costs yeah. us about... 30 grand just to copyright all the stuff that we <laughs> yeah. own. Yeah. And often we have motifs that we draw separately and we might use them in something yeah. else. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult. I think um, I think we've been lucky so far, but I know there's some people get horrendously blatantly like ripped off. It's a shame. Um, describe how you guys work together when you're working on a project. Uh, depending on project, uh, I'm I'm more getting my image from my cloud in my head. Yeah. Sarah is really good at giving me, sharing me uh, that other image source she picked up from in Pinterest and things like yeah. that. Yeah. So her image is really vision is really clear. Yeah. So that that's really good for me to work with her. Yeah. 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 I tend to if we're doing it if we're working on a theme for a client if someone's given if it's our stuff we I just sort of draw whatever we fancy because yeah. I guess we've got more freedom. Yeah. If we've got a client, what I tend to do is I'll get um I'll put a Pinterest board together of things from all different places, whether it's cultural patterns, illustrations, textiles, um, anything that I'll I'll sort of, you know, say whether it's frozen butterflies, mm. I'll find loads and loads of sources, whether it's butterflies from nature or photography or whatever. Yeah. Just to sort of get an idea of colours and shapes and and stuff and then we'll we'll share that and then kind of go away and think actually well we could take the shapes from inside that wing or and then we kind of go and draw from a bit more from our heads then so mm -hmm. we don't copy anybody's stuff we yeah. just kind of I, I like to have a I like to have a, a nice research bit yeah first, you're of a course. deep researcher yeah well I just think if you're working you know, if somebody gave me the theme of um, like when we had um, art deco for something yeah. So I spent a really nice afternoon looking at loads of Art Deco sculptures and ceramics and textiles and 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 then the you know mm -hmm. Egypt and all the and where the you know the culturally wise yeah. the, or the timeline that Art Deco was reflecting and the and all the elements. So mm -hmm. I then had yeah. a much better idea of of the different kind of things we might want to use. Yeah. And then sometimes if you find like an amazing um, piece of textile from like the 1920s yeah. and it's got a fantastic crane on it or whatever, then I might draw elements yeah. from that. Um, I think it's really important, like you were saying with copyright, that you're not... I think you, as an artist or an illustrator or designer, you can source stuff from a cultural perspective. Yeah. As long as you're not copying another contemporary mm. maker exactly. or illustrator or designer. Yeah. But yeah, so I like to have a nice source first, and then we'll go away and say, well, actually, we could do three monkeys in that style, but one jumping, one lying down, or whatever, and they'd look nice. And then actually, we'll do similar style. We'll draw a horse and a dog, or yeah. whatever. And then I might say to Yoshi, okay, I need a crane, a monkey, a dog, mm. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Or I need, um, and then we'll kind of we'll draw loads of stuff depending on. I mean, if we're working on two or three projects, and Yoshi's working on finishing one thing, then I might start the next project. Yeah. Or vice yeah. versa. And like with the children's book we're working on at the moment, I've been, I sort of did the base drawings, and then I've given Yoshi 
I'll do some drawings, like I've been drawing all the trees, and then I'll say, can you draw the spirits, and then she'll draw that. And then when we've got all the pencil drawings together, mm. I've been drawing over everything so that there's one consistent line drawing look okay. to the whole thing, yeah. even though it's a mixture of both our drawings. Mm, cool. Because I think even though you're just drawing over stuff, yeah. there's a difference in the way that you handle the pen, in yeah. a way. And I think it would look like two people's drawings, whereas if we both draw on the same sheet of paper, and then I draw over everything. Yeah. So there's more of a consistency to it. You okay, know, yeah. It's a mixture. Do that. Mm. Um, and then Yoshi does a lot of the colour work. Yoshi's much better at putting collage patterns and textures and textiles and colour. I'm just a pattern addict. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I draw a lot of the line work. I love drawing. Yeah. Yoshi loves colouring. Mm. Cool. So I don't mind sitting and doing all the drawing work. Yeah. You do colouring as well, but... I'm getting but, better at yeah. it, but you actually keep saying to remind me to do it, otherwise I mess it up and just redo it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She's like, I well, just want to redo all the colour work, and it's fine. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that you know. It's fine, could you do it like this, please? <laughs> I'm just talking about technical side. Oh, no, yeah. I know, but I'm deadly because I forget. <laughs> Can I do that again? <laughs> Yeah. This is why you guys work so well together. <laughs> but so far, no punching into each other. No, not yet. No, no. not yet. I <laughs> choose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we are very honest, and if we're yeah. cross with each other about yeah. something or we're not happy about something, we will mm. say straight away, like I'm a bit annoyed about this, or I'm really stressed because I've been up till three in the morning colouring and yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's part of our work in sharing yeah. our thoughts. <laughs> yeah. 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 You have to keep an open and honest relationship. Oh so yeah, otherwise we wouldn't be able to working together. Like no, this. yeah. Yeah. It's nice to also have your mm. have kind of a, your roles. You know what you're doing at that moment, so you're not stepping on mm -hmm. each other's toes and things. Because I know that's mm. always a problem yeah. for some for some duo teams. But I think we do. We like working on different stuff. Yeah. And I think we both have different talents that we're better at than each other in yeah. a way. Yeah. So we kind of um, and actually, if you get stuck, if you're Sometimes we're working on something and the client keeps coming back and saying, oh, I don't know, I don't know what yeah, about it, I'm not that. quite yeah. sure, but mm. can you take something out or put them back in? And you've been working on it all day and you're like, can you, can you, I'm just sending it to you, can you do you something with it? it? Because yeah. I, I like what I've done. <laughs> I don't want to change it. I don't yeah. know what she wants. <laughs> so like, can you have a go? <laughs> yeah. So sometimes we do throw things backwards and forwards mm. from each other until... One of us will get it. One of us will get it right. Like pass the parcel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it gets changed. <laughs> yeah. It gets tweaked each time. Each time. Yeah. To what they want. Mm. Um, where are some places you guys like to go to to kind of gain inspiration? I like the V and A. Oh, me too. Yeah. Mm. We should go to. We've never been to V and A together. Not together. Oh, no, you totally should go to V and A together. I yeah. Love that place. No, I love yeah. the V and A. I think it depends what we're doing, really. Yeah. I think sometimes you can just walk around a you know, mm. walk around anywhere and see things that, yeah. depending on what you're working on. Mm. I get weird ideas when I'm going to sleep. I'll be like, oh, I can move <laughs> that and change I that tree and other your, thing. And give me a <laughs> sketchbook and a pen yeah. by you. <laughs> do you. Do you have a sketchbook and a pen by your bedside table? I, I tend to put just notes in my phone. I just um, like grab yeah. my phone and put a couple of notes in. But I do tend mm. to get my, if something's not working right, yeah. mm. um, like one of the pages from the book, we've been working on that I'm just not happy with and I suddenly had a kind of oh <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I get, that would work yeah and I get inspiration often from the that wood yeah. when I'm walking my dog Margot yeah yeah and it's just just no noise That's on helpful, the other isn't it? yeah on the other hand I love being in a coffee bar yeah the noise, noise. Yeah. The noise gives me a lot of information. Yeah. Um, describe each of your style, clothing-wise. What are some of your favorite brands, or you know, if you're going to go out, what, what do you like to dress like? Um, yeah. Um, I quite like. Um, I love anything with my husband always jokes like you like anything with an illustration on it. Nice. So, it's not surprising. I, I quite like, um, you know, things like Balenciaga and Mimi that I can't afford that I would love to be able to wear if anybody wants to send me some free stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> or any of us. Um, I can't think of, I, I tend to buy either kind of quite 
like new design. I, I go if I'm I don't buy a lot. I yeah. used to go out every year and do the sort of you know H and M top shop, yeah. Urban Outfitters sort of shop where you go twice a year for spring, summer, and autumn, winter, and I would sort of blow yeah. the season's money. I don't really do that anymore. I tend to buy maybe. I was having a conversation with um, Manifesto Kids the other yeah. day about this. Um, I buy a lot less, but I buy more expensive stuff. Yeah, so I tend to buy, tend to either go to Liberties and buy like maybe two things, yeah. like a new top and a new skirt, or whatever. But because I've been doing it for about five or six years, I've now got quite a nice, nice. wardrobe of nice. So I'll, I'll, I tend to sort of go, what do I not have that either goes with this or whatever? What yeah. do I need? I need a jumper and I need mm. a new shirt. Yeah. Or whatever. And then, so it's more kind of. I, I guess more of not like crazy luxury brands because I can't afford anything that's like I went to went in the other day and was like looking at something that was like two grand going <laughs> not to be going quite on but yeah. <laughs> unless I'm going to tuck mm. it up my jumper it's not coming home with me but yeah I kind of tend to go I like Sandro for sort yeah. of basics because yeah, they've nice. always got a nice shapes and a little detail yeah um, if I'm being really naughty I like things like Golden Goose I love their shoes so much. Yeah, which is like maybe yeah. one pair every two years. Yeah, the last, the last two, their <laughs> designs are so cool. Um, Pinko, yeah. where my new coat's from. And then I tend to, I quite often find new brands, so I've got loads of stuff, mm. but I can't think what yeah. what their names are. But I, yeah, things that are either really colourful or yeah. pattern or... I'm kind of just starting to buy some more black things so that I can <laughs> cope with all the colour and pattern and stuff. I also, I love, um, where should I get, um, Zadig and Volta and yeah, I've fallen in love with a little bit and when yes. I can afford it, Kenzo. Yeah, oh god. Yeah. I can see you guys, definitely Kenzo vibe. But it's that kind of, you know, one one piece, Yeah. one or two pieces a year, like yeah, spring, favorite. summer and one or two. So even though they're more expensive, but then they last forever. Like yeah. that, you know you'll wear that for the next 15 years. Yeah. And it'll last, and it fits beautifully, and it's tailored. So I don't ever tend really to buy High Street, never. Yeah. Good thing. But only because I just think you're making an investment in something that you will always have, rather than chucking everything out. Every... Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. What about you, Yoshi? What is your style? My style? What's my style? Can't really describe. <laughs> I mean, with not, the Japanese, and do you, I mean, do you have a very clearly because you're Japanese, you're a Japanese influence? Do you? E, now, uh, here, I love going to anthropology. Yeah. Because they have most of my my taste. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, and, and then now I love, go yeah, shopping in Japan. So because the Tokyo brands are so different. Yeah. From any other country. I love that uniqueness. I love everything's oversized too. It's so nice. The shapes are beautiful. Oh yeah, yeah. The Japanese shapes mm. are amazing. But you wear a lot of bold colours and patterns. Yes, same as you. Of, like you yeah. said, I I'm now becoming a bit more well organised about my what I've got in my wardrobe. Yeah. Yeah. I, again, when I was younger, I used to buy too many things. Um, and then every time when I open the closet, <laughs> the things slide. fall out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I didn't know what I've got, but now I'm much more organized. And then yeah, so, so like Sarah said, um, I add some more plain color to go where with my oh, uh, pattern. Do um, <laughs> yeah, more balance. You yeah. tend to buy more shoes. I you love like shoes. shoes. Yeah, yeah. I don't Lots. have too many though. Yeah, but you've got quite. All your shoes are quite quirky. I love it. Yeah, cool yeah. Shoes. Mm. Nice. So, tell me about work-life balance. How do you guys do it with kids and everything else? And the cat over here. <laughs> and the leopard. And the leopard. She's leopard. Yeah. She, just, she just sleeps all day, so she's kind of. Oh, she's got it know, down. Yeah. Work-life balance is easy for you. Yeah. <laughs> like my cat. Um, I think it's just it's that trying to get um, trying to get stuff done in the school run, which is the. The nightmare for everybody, I think, though, isn't it? Like the sort of mothers yeah. running around everywhere trying to get everything done, especially yeah. when you do sometimes as well find yourself still standing in the playground <laughs> about half an hour after you're supposed to have gone home because you just come in on a conversation. That's quite, yeah. I do that quite a lot actually. Um, but yeah, I think it's just trying to get everything done in that time frame. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I'm lucky. I work at home. The studio's above um, where we live. My husband's salon's downstairs. So I can, you know, like, Scarlett's off today. So she's obviously not at school, but she's eight, so I can do a lot more. Yeah. But also if I need to pop out and if I need to do stuff, I can't, I don't have to take her everywhere with me. Yeah. And I do like the fact that obviously she's sick, but I'm at home and I can, I can still work. I like the fact that I can be there for her. Yeah. You know, it's not like she's had to go and stay at a friend's house today or she's had to go and stay with my mum. So I like being able to be a parent and do my own thing, but I also really wish there was at least three more hours in the day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And our work is not, not like, go, okay, time to go home, switch yeah. on and off, not like that. So hard, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. But that's actually, I think we're getting a bit better at that, because I have said that the client we're working on on the storybook, who are lovely, but I've said once we break for Christmas, please don't send me any feedback. Yeah. Because I will look at it and I will then either get stressed or worried about it or I'll feel like I should be doing it and I yeah. don't actually want to know anything about what you think about it yeah. until January. <laughs> and then enough. you can have my whole yeah. heart and soul in it again. Yeah. But I think sometimes you have to be quite... Um, and in fact, this year I'm going to, for the first time, put mm. on an email... Out of office. We're out of office. Yeah. So please email, but don't expect a response. Yeah. Last question. What, um, for women out there that want to start their own thing, what's your advice? What have you learned along the way? I think, um, firstly, oh, I was going to say before as well, get a good accountant. Oh, yes. Get, you need a good accountant. Get an accountant, yeah. even if your accountant must laugh when they send you their fee because they know that you're paying them more than you've earned in the year. Which I did laugh the first, the first time my accountant told me, but I was like, really? You know we didn't earn that this year. But hey, but no, get a good accountant, um, because actually you need to get that stuff right. And even if, I mean, you know, even if you still do, I do all of our accounts, but yeah. I've been given something to fill in, and it self-adds everything up, and then yeah. I send it to him and he does everything. He asks me a few questions, but I don't have to worry about that, and that's been a huge like massive lift I think it would have been a big burden because I'm not the best mathematician in the world and there's yeah. so many things you need to know that oh, you yeah. just don't and he's been great with them because we when we work in Japan we have to get something called a double taxation agreement which means that we don't get taxed in Japan and in England okay. so having someone if you work internationally sometimes it's really good um, don't spend all of your money at once yeah. don't mm. get a loan out when you start a business and if you do get a small one, and I mean like under a grand, mm -hmm. get something that you can just start yourself off with and then try and make your business work and pay for itself until you actually know what you would, what you really need to spend the money on. Because I think if we'd had 10 grand at the beginning of our business, I would have thrown it up the wall as something ridiculous. And I would have, now I think after three years, I know what I should spend money on and what I shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm tight, aren't I? With that. I hold all the purse. Yeah. <laughs> like, if she has to ask me, sometimes I'm crying and can I have some money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can we have, can we have I some new this? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the thing is, just doesn't do any of the accounts, which is fair enough. So I know, so, yeah, I know every yeah, single rubbish. penny that gets spent. Yeah. I know who <laughs> owes us what, who we owe, how much we owe the wholesaler mm. for our sweatshirts, how much we've got on our credit card. Like, yeah. so. Yeah. But I think be really careful, you don't need to spend tons. And if you research companies well, yeah. and there are lots of companies in the UK that do do minimums. And we found companies that will print one of something or 50 yeah. or 500, mm. but a lot of, if, you go, if you're go if you going straight to a big factory abroad, you're gonna, they, you know, I, I don't want 200 of yeah. one piece of one design for the first time we're selling it, because yeah. if it doesn't sell, you're stuck with 200 of one design. Mm, I think yeah. go go small, Small batches, if you can, even though they'll cost more, and yeah. the wholesale prices will be a nightmare. Yeah, yeah that's the problem as wholesale. Um, yeah. You can do markets, you can sell your stuff, you can work out your margins as you go along, work yeah. out what even margins are when you first start. <laughs> <laughs> What's the wholesale price? I will work it out. Um, so I think, I think it's worth... There's stuff we bought that we only got 50 of that we're still trying to sell three years on. Yeah. And then stuff that we buy now that we can't order again fast enough. But you don't know what people are going to buy. Mm -hmm. So don't go yeah. buying hundreds of something at the beginning mm -hmm. in the yeah. hopes they're just going to fly off the shelves because they, they may or they may not. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Be careful what you spend your money on.
and mm -hmm. try and get small batches of things just to even work out what people want to buy yeah and what they don't yeah mm. good advice oh and don't be surprised if you're um beautifully um sent out designs that came back perfect on the samples are all fucked up on the huge order that you get <laughs> oh my God. Uh, we had one person sent this back a sweatshirt where one of the sleeves was bigger than the other so now yeah, really every time we get the sweatshirts i try Check. every single one of them on yeah in front of the mirror yeah. <laughs> make sure. sure and then and sometimes you get them back with screen printing and there's like ink on them and sometimes the ink will wash out, so then yeah. you have to wash all of them yourselves. And then so you're getting them in, checking mm -hmm. each one, trying yeah. them all on, washing the ones that have got ink patterns on, and then ironing all of them and packaging them all. And it takes mm -hmm. ages, but actually it's worth checking all your stuff. Yeah. And mm -hmm. send stuff back. Oh, you have I to. I always send stuff yeah. back, yeah. you know, even if it's only seven sweatshirts. Well, they didn't do it right. Like, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, don't yeah, that's a nightmare. That's my least favourite thing when you're really excited and the sample comes back. We had the first ones of these. They'd got the colours the wrong way around, so they had the hot pink with the gold, and then the pale pink with the red. And I was like, "Oh, why would you do that?" Wrong yeah. way around. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's done the printing has printed the wrong, yeah. put the wrong two colours yeah. together. Yeah, that's that's a pain. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but most supplies are really good, and they're and they're cool. But it's mm. just it's just annoying when you've been waiting to launch something and they're not the right yeah. colour or yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much for spending your afternoon with me. It's been very nice coming to Hitchin and spending the afternoon with these lovely ladies. Please do check them out. Uh, they're also uh, on Instagram and uh, their website is Sasha Is it .co .uk or just .com? .com. 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 So check them out. If you want to collaborate, please send them an email or actually just pick up the phone pick and give the them phone, a call. Them a call. <laughs> leave a message. <laughs> leave a message if you want to talk. Yeah, if I don't recognize yeah. the number, I'll <laughs> Yeah, and leave your message. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, thank you very much for tuning in to Chit Chat Freddy. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.